Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we talk about TV shows of the supernatural, fantasy, and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Charmed. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we finally got an explanation about what the allergy was. Obviously, the whole conversation has always been, like, what's the connection between that and the Tomb of Chaos? It turns out the allergy was a... Uh, magical defense system for the uh, the tomb. Like, obviously, the tomb has multiple ones. Obviously, the way it kind of, like, locks you in kind of like your own prison. Like, I made parallels to, like, how hell works in Preacher. It's kind of a similar thing, but kind of like how it traps you like that. Well, another of its defense mechanisms was the allergy. It was meant to be used against a uh, mortal. That way, like, no mortal being could ever... Because whoever broke into the tomb, they'd assume it'd be a human. So, like, we need to make sure that that, that mortal can never be near any magical creature. It was meant to repel them. No one would have foreseen it coming that the charmed ones would be the one, you know. And I even love Maggie being like... Well, you guys didn't... How were we supposed to know? We didn't know that. And it's like, well, there were no clear instructions. Actually, there were. And points to the tablets. like, you mean the thing that's in a language only you can read and understand? It's like, that is some BS. Because um, it's also like, what did you expect like from the... But like I said, it adds that interesting element of understanding that. Because like, you know, fully understanding like the moment they blew open the door by adding in the source's power, it blew open the door to the tomb of chaos, or at least kind of cracked it open. And that's when the security was there and was like, oh, like, let's, I, you know, infect them so that they, you know, because it was an attack on the tomb. So um, the irony behind it all. So that's fascinating now they're all searching for an egg and it's like yeah this egg is supposed to be held by um, a living being and i guess that's supposed to be because at first like when that thing i was like is that thing going to come alive the moment they take the egg or something like that but it never did all we got was like it kind of like opening its mouth and kind of like spreading like that mist more stuff about it about uh, that's about it but i'm assuming it's because well the last time they were out and about the thing was alive but it's been like what thousands of years so like the thing's dead now so, but I also love Maggie being like, are we sure like some Indiana Jones stuff of like, yeah, the cave crumbling or a giant boulder coming out. And it's like, Macy's like, you watch too many movies, but and I was like, oh, might as well be safe. I'm curious, was it just their paranoia or would, would that have worked? I mean, granted the way things play out at the end of the episode, is one thing, you know, maybe it's like they didn't do the switch fast enough, or maybe they got lucky. Maybe it's like, oh, we got lucky the first time, but coming through here a second time, we're not so lucky, but, um. Uh, they were to make the switch happen, and they were luckily... I also love Mel, Mel Macy being like, no, nah, I can use my mask. She's like, I did hold my breath for like 100, and I can hold my breath for 120. Because she said, like, she wanted to do uh, something uh, when she was in eighth grade, and it's kind of like, oh, interesting how skills come back in full circle, like all these years later. But uh, they um, end up leaving. Also... Poor uh, uh, Maggie, like her, uh, like obviously they leave, they got the egg and everything. It's like, okay, we're going to do this. But like Maggie's literally in the middle of therapy because it's like, obviously she's having panic attacks. It's like, do you have a stressful life? And it's like, yeah. And all she can mention is like, the, that's the thing. You should find you a magical, I mean, I'm sure there's someone she can talk to in a magical world that's also a, a trained psychologist or therapist i think that's what she should because she needs to have someone she can literally be 100 percent open with maybe we'll see a development on that front eventually but i think you need more of a magical therapist than you need like a normal human therapist because you can't that's the thing you can never be 100 percent honest with your therapist you can be vague and kind of substitute some of your issues but it will never be like a full-blown like getting the help she really needs with everything because it's both because she also needs because that's also the thing like she would probably need someone who understands like right you live in the mortal world Plus the supernatural world. So, like, it had to probably most likely be, like, another witch who understands the balancing act that, you know, that kind of entails. Because she's talking about, like, yeah, my life is kind of stressful, but all she can bring up is the internship. And it's like, yeah, and this damn allergy keeping me from what I want. Uh, uh, shellfish. Uh, you know, I just kind of want to be with him. I mean, it, you know, it. I call Because I love it so much. And it's like, but for her, it's like, that's what re is reluctancy about the Jordan thing. Because for her, it's like, I do want to be with him, but I'm also wanted to dedicate this year to me, like... Everything with Parker, I'm not trying to, like, jump at, like, into another relationship, you know, it's just like, you know, she wants to kind of focus on her, like, you know, that's what the internship's about, kind of progressing, and what I want, you know, focus on me, you know, and especially giving everything going down, this does seem like, yeah, it's, like, it is some time that she needs to uh, delve into herself. If I remember correctly, um, 
once again, parallels with the original show. I feel like Phoebe took some time away from because I know there was a because there's a point in the story where like I remember Phoebe kind of gave up on love. I know Cole comes back into the story. He actually introduced her to Billy Zane's character, who was a demon as well. But it was the whole purpose of it was to make her kind of find love again because she had given up on it. And it's like it like Phoebe, you know, she's a very loving person, so it's like she didn't need to kind of give up on love. So I'm sure they're trying to draw parallels to that storyline and it, to an extent, but like I, I do remember that being a thing with Phoebe kind of giving up on love. Um, once again, it's not like a one for one, but it just it made me kind of think of that. Uh, that seems like an angle they could kind of go down with that. Uh, but like I said, her therapy session gets interrupted by Macy's like, yeah, eggs ready, let's go. Leave a note for your therapist. And they enact the spell because like, once again, we don't know what the side effects may be, but let's give it our all because we, we got to get rid of this allergy. And I wasn't sure what to expect. The moment, like, Mace, uh, Maggie woke up, I was like, and she was looking at Macy, I was like, oh, are we going to find out, like, they switched bodies or something like that? Because then that isn't, well, I'm, I'm, once again, it's been so long since I saw the original show. I feel like, I mean, there's plenty of things that kind of do the Freaky Friday thing anyway, you know, there's plenty of things, but I think the original show did a Freaky Friday episode where, like, I don't know if it's all of them switched bodies or whether it was just, like, two of them. I don't remember. I feel like I vaguely remember that. Correct me if in the comments down below if you are, uh, like, more aware, but, like, I, I could be, like, 100% full of crap. That might have never been a storyline, but I feel like I vaguely remember that. Once again, like I said, plenty of stuff has kind of done the Freaky Friday thing, so I could be, like, blurring, like, other shows or movies and stuff like that that have done it and kind of confusing which aren't regardless i thought that's where we we're gonna go it's like but it's she's like oh male uh macy it's like, okay so she's herself so it's like what happened and it's like and then it's like oh we can touch each other yeah yeah we're hugging and everything and then macy and harry they hug and then they kiss and it's like oh it's sweet but also it's like let's uh, let them have the room to themselves because they you know it's like the next day and it's like oh like it's like we're walking beside each other it's like wow I was like, I was kind of like, what is the downside? Because there's no way this is going to be perfect. There's no way this is all going to work out. Um, but it's like, everything's so great. It's like, oh, everything's so awesome. Then I'm like, uh, do you know. And that was also like Maggie being like, yeah, she's just scared and waiting for the other shoe to drop. Which Mel was like, no, sometimes the shoe just fits. Which we then immediately hard cut to Abby busting into their house. Because her demon side's taking over and it's getting worse. Yo, Abby looked a wreck this episode. To be fair, it's like when your demon side's kicking in all the time, you're not actually getting any damn sleep. She's got, like, bags on her eyes. She looks... We've never seen Abby like this. That was crazy to me. But um, at the same time, it's like, honestly, walk, walking through everyone's lives, like, everything is working out perfectly for, like, uh, Macy. It's like, yo, I went to the board. They're, like, all about the free clinic and everything. It's like, oh, so, like... It's good PR and stuff like that, so things are good on that front. Uh, the perfecti were telling Harry, it's like, no, 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 enjoy your sabbatical, because uh, he wants to, you know, take uh, Macy to Paris. That was kind of the goal and everything. Obviously showing them the World Wide Web and everything, and it's like, what's that, a dog? Apparently doing math, and it's like, no, 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 that's not, um, it's something else, so I'm assuming it was something from the prison. It's like, don't worry, we got this. Um, so that unfolds. Uh, but they go to Paris and they're having a wonderful time. And it's just like, it's so cute and adorable. Um, it's like, you're just like so happy for them. It's like they finally get to really enjoy their time as a couple. Because by the time they got together, it was also like, oh, cool, cool, cool. The allergy was kind of soon to follow because like everything kind of went to shit afterwards. Like a little after they got together. So like they didn't really get to enjoy being a couple too much. Um, but also... Um, you know, they're enjoying it, and it's like, oh, man, oh, our, our, like, there was a mishap with our reservation. Oh, you're also getting upgraded. I was like, okay, so, and that, that was one of, like, because the way just things ha happen for everybody, Maggie presented her thing to her professor at her, and, um, it's like, yeah, you got the internship. It's like, yay! You know, uh, Mel meets with, it's like, oh, man, this principal, this, uh, dean looks mean, but she's like, dude, I love what you said. Fact of matters, we need you. Bam, you got the you got the position and stuff like that. It's like, oh, everything's working out for him. But the moment it happened with um Harry and um Macy, I was like, 
oh, everything's working out for you. But then, like, you kind of find out, like, oh, yeah, our room, oh, we wanted, you know, Frank and Viola, oh, we wanted that room. And I was like, I was like, so basically your luck comes from basically all the good stuff happening from you. You're basically screwing over other people to do it. But then, like, that one didn't work, go out too bad because it's like, no, 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 here, they can have the room. It's their 40 euro anniversary. And obviously, Macy's like, oh, I can't wait for that. I, you know, they, that could be us. And obviously, that, you know, sore subject rears its ugly head, right? Harry's not going to age, but she is. And obviously for him, it's like, we can't have that, you know? Um, and it's a complicated thing because at the end of the story, like, you know, at least, you know, at that part of the story, like, turns out Frank had a heart attack, Viola being there with him. It, it was kind of a scary sight for Macy because it's like, for her, it's like, I don't want to see you die, Harry. But Harry's also like, I don't want to see you die either, He's like, you know, death is kind of, you know, a sad situation all in its own right. But at the very least, it's kind of part of the natural order. But it's still just kind of a scary thing in its own right. But for Harry, it's like, yeah, and immor mortality is also a curse, too, having to watch everyone you care about die, you know. So there's, it's, it's kind of a lose-lose situation in that regard. But one, at the very least, you get to be with that person, grow old with them, and spend a life to be able to just have that life with them. So there's that. Uh, Maggie ends up finding out, oh, Antonio was in a car accident. It's like, ooh, that sucks. Macy, uh, uh, Mel finds out, like, oh, yeah, like, all my, uh, there were two co work there were two uh, senior professors who got, uh, who were supposed to get tenure next, and I kind of snatched that from them. So it's like, to make their lives better, they've ba to make their wishes come true, basically they've kind of screwed over and hurt other people in the process. Um, so now it's a situation of, like, I'm curious, they didn't, obviously it didn't stick around long enough, but it's like, if we keep this up, how much more will people have to suffer just for us? Not just Antonio, not just Frank and Viola, but also like, we don't know where that would have just stopped there. It probably would have escalated just like, oh, to keep this wish of yours going, we're going to screw over everyone in your path just to keep that goal of yours going, you know, so... And at the same time, like, Josefina finally gets her powers because she got, like, a rare book and she was able to do this spell. Because uh, it was interesting because Mel was like, oh, like, why don't you go to college, you know, have a kind of like some, you know, a life kind of outside of magic because you can't just be all magic all the time. Especially them because they know that better than anyone. It's like, we also have to have a normal life because there's also so much you can do outside of the magic world to kind of change the world as well. So you don't just always need magic. It helps in its own right, but it's also like there's a lot you can just do with your experiences outside of that. So when it's all said and done, though, um... Josefina's power did activate. She's kind of a poison ivy. Interestingly enough, because uh, I immediately thought that, but I also was like, oh yeah, like, Danielle Pennebaker's character from Sky High was like that. Those are immediately, like, what kind of, which I also think is kind of interesting in the grand scheme of things. I don't, I don't know if I brought that up recently. It's like, right, you had a plant-based power, and there's a character in the DC universe that has a plant-based power, you know, poison ivy, and you're a character in the DC universe uh, on The Flash as Caitlin Snow, but also, like, Killer Frost, who's other, like, um, uh, pseudo villain because obviously she's kind of like started as a villain but became a hero in the flash and stuff like that but then also like well caitlin and a frost thing happened in you know the flash so like it, it just it sent me down a whole tangent just thinking about it but um Josefina doesn't want to give up her powers because it's like you guys have always been special you've always been the charm ones you don't know what's like to feel powers to be fair they kind of do because uh well you don't we weren't around for it but they lost their powers like most of last season so there's that uh also, they went most of their lives not knowing what they were. At least, I think Josefina grew up kind of having an idea, like, being more well-versed in that world. So, it's like, they didn't know they were special. They went most of their lives not knowing they were. But also, it is a situation, but the lesson more so than anything, it's like, like, there's a lot. Magic is great and everything, but, you know, it's meant to be used for the greater good, not just for selfish reasons. I get it. You, you've you wanted this your entire life, but there's so much you can do. Like, using your magic like this Magic is meant to be used for the greater good. And, like, obviously, you want to help people in Puerto Rico. Like, it's understandable, but this isn't just the way to go about it. So, because their idea is, like, we have to return the egg. Because they initially they're thinking, like, well, if things are working out for Josefina, then maybe the egg is having an effect on her. But it makes sense. They would want to cast a spell, so it's only having a direct effect on the... Uh, charm ones, but it does have a ripple effect in, like I said, to make their dreams come true, make everything work out for them, other people kind of get screwed over, and like I said, I believe given enough time, it would have just escalated more and more, just to make sure it's basically, almost, it's a weird 
way to go about it, but it's almost like a final destination thing, how, like, death does whatever it can to come after you in the most roundabout ways. It's kind of like, I feel like this spell would have just made it so, like, oh, they would it would have come after them in a very roundabout way to kind of make their dreams come true, so... But uh, they talk to the perfect guy, and it's like, oh, you want the allergy back? It's like, we don't want the allergy back. We need it. And for her, for um, a larger, it's kind of like, oh, this language is so confusing. And it's like, well, we can give you the allergy back. You just have to return the egg if that's what you really want. But it's like, it's not like they want to, but they need to do this because, you know, for, and it was interesting. And I think this speaks volumes when the perfect guy is like, you're the charmed ones, almost kind of like, other people's misery, like your your wishes, you being happy, you being you're kind of even kind of like that elitist. It's like you guys are elite, so a couple of humans kind of suffering. It's not that big of a deal. You've got your powers back. You've got your lives what you want them to be. Plus, you're back in full blown charge as the charm ones. Like this is, you know, every your happiness is kind of a few humans have to suffer here and there. Who cares? I was like that speaks a lot of volumes, but it's also like showcasing like because. There be, it's like, but our, like, just because we're the charm ones doesn't mean other people should have to suffer just to make our wishes come true. Just for us to be happy, it shouldn't just, it shouldn't be a thing of other people have to suffer for, you know, so. But the fact is, the perfect I have that perspective is kind of interesting, but ultimately they put the, um, egg back, but lo and behold, like Maggie wondered, like, it's a cave going to come crashing down, and it does. Luckily, it turns out, Josefina's powers don't come from you know, the egg it came from her. Like, she was able to bring her powers to the full f forefront, and they were able to get out because she was able to build a bridge of vines. So, you know, and they're celebrating her at the end of the episode. And, you know, it's a, you know, uh, a, a ritual kind of celebrating her, you know, her powers uh, coming to the forefront. So that was pretty dumb. I thought what's interesting, too, it's like, you know, she's decided to go back to Puerto Rico. I was almost hoping she'd stick around because I was like, because Mel was like, oh, going to college and stuff like that. You know, her being a professor and everything. I thought she'd stick around, but no, it's like she's going to go back to Puerto Rico and now she has her powers. And, you know, it's also like, right, now they've learned about a, a side of their family that weren't aware of. This is an opportunity, you know, so we'll probably be dealing more on that front. Like, whether or not uh, Josefina, like, ends up going, like, immediately home or sticks around for, like, the next episode or two, we'll have to wait and see. But, you know, it's like, oh, I thought you were going to stick around for a while. It would have been pretty dope. Once again, like, kind of feeling that, I, I, I keep making a comparison, but kind of feeling the role of kind of, like, Billy in the final season of the original series, kind of, I, I was wondering if it would be something of that nature, so. There's also the conversation uh, between Harry and um, Macy about what they're going to do now, you know, it's like, what are we going to do, spend the rest of our lives with this, you know, being six feet apart, and he's like, well, there is a means of changing that, and it's like, for him, it's like, you know, what if, what if I become mortal, and it's like, you know, and I think, because it's also a complicated thing, because for Macy, it's also a thing of, like, right, like, worried that, you know, she doesn't want Harry to die, but if he's mortal, he can die. At the very least, it, being a white lighter, you know, like, no, he's good, he's okay, he's got his powers, he'll be safe, like, at the very least, he won't be as in danger, so that, like, like worry about, like, his life, like, you're gonna, you know, because when the trouble, like, uh, when shit hits the fan, like, Harry, Harry might want to try and help, but she'll be like, no, 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 I don't want you involved, I don't want you to die, like, you could easily die now, and it's like, I think that's potentially where we can kind of see things going on that front, so we'll see. Uh, and another interesting angle to this, obviously Jordan and Maggie were talking early in the episode, because she called him up to say, like, yeah, I got the internship, it's like, oh, that's awesome. Uh, really quickly, I should also note, like, Frank and Viola are okay, those two professors, like, right, it's like, it was a mistake, so um, Mace, uh, Mel lost the tenure, but uh, but also, like, Antonio miraculously recovered, so... I don't know whether that was, like, a Harry came to heal them, or was it just because now that everything's reversed, now they... It, it seemed like they were more so leaning towards, like, a, oh, he miraculously uh, healed... They, that all worked out because the egg was returned, but um, I don't know if Harry, like, like did something about that or not, but I think it was the former, not the, uh, the latter, and not the uh, former, but uh, nevertheless, circling back to it, um, Jordan is... um. Uh, you know, talking with uh, Maggie, and it's like, yeah, friends, and it's like, yep, that's kind of bothering him, because, once again, Maggie's feeling it, too, it's just, she's just kind of afraid to take those steps, because it's like, no, like, I think she's kind of worried about, you know, it's also that thing of, like, once a dynamic is kind of out there, it changes things, like, you know, us going from just being friends to, like, something else, it, like, you know, I mean, to be fair, it's already always been something there since the beginning, since they first became friends, it's always been there, you know, so it's just kind of only intensified as time goes on, 
But then Abigail shows up, and I love Jordan being like, what's up with you ghosts and demons? Doesn't anybody just, damn it, knock? Like, why you have to just pop up out of nowhere? And for her, it's like, you know, he's treating her wounds and everything. And so it's like, I need your help. I need you to help bind my powers. And he's like, why me? Like, can't you get one of your demons to help? Side note, I'm sure one of the demons finding out you want to bind your powers, they probably wouldn't be too appreciative of that because it's like, right, you know... And that would not work well in her favor, especially kind of how hardcore she has been in the demon world and the way that's, I mean, probably a lot of people resentful for her. Would have been an opportunity for a lot of people to probably come after her in that regard. But um, it's like, why me? It's like, because it needs to be someone of like a noble, merciful heart or something of that nature. And he's like, yeah, flattery won't work. She's like, I'm not flattering you. I'm just telling you the facts. It's like, and the, binding her powers means everything, witch and demon. So, sealing away her demon power means getting rid of her witch powers as well. And it's like, yeah, I'll just be a mediocre, mediocre human like the rest of you, but at the very least, this nightmare will be over. So, we see them kind of enacting that. There was a moment when she showed up at the Charmwood's house, and we never got a resolution to it. Like, she was in there, you know... I, I wonder... I, I'm assuming it's because... Maybe her, because her demon side is trying to destroy everything, and like they're kind of allies to Abby, so maybe her demon side was trying to like attack them because like maybe Abby was going to try and go to them for help, and maybe that's where her demon side tried to like go there to potentially kill them, so it couldn't because like her demon side is trying to crush her, you know, while also self preserving itself. Maybe that's what that was. But then, like, she gets attacked and she reverts back to human. I was like, what the hell was that? We never got an answer to that. Uh, but in the process, like, all of a sudden, the mark on the back of her neck manifests into an actual symbol. And it's like, what the hell is that? And then, like, she disappears. And then Jordan's like, who are you? And I'm like, oh, did the perfect die? And lo and behold, we find out Abby wakes up. And it's like that whole thing of, like, yeah, why is it when you wake up and they just happen to leave? And then she looks around and it's like, she walks through a door. And the moment she ends up at safe space, you're like, yep. The perfect eye locked her in the tomb of chaos. I mean, it's understandable. She's, I mean, it makes you wonder, like, are they planning on doing it to every, is it just like, and, and this is what I brought up before. Uh, I think they are this this series version of the avatars. They're trying to create like a they know that it's they even said it to Harry. It's like oh yeah, like peace and order is kind of what we're here for. And Abigail being a demon and everything, her kind of running rampant. It's like uh, rather than dealing, like, we need to just lock her up just because she's a demon and everything. Plus she's kind of lost control of her powers. But the fact is, we end up finding out they locked up Jordan too. So. They might have done that because, well, for one, they don't know that Jordan is tight knit with the charm one, so that's going to get ugly the moment that truth comes out. But two, it's also in their mind, it's like, oh, you're a human helping demons, then you're a danger to the magical world. You're a danger to the charm one, so that's why you got to get locked up as well. I'm assuming that, like, symbol on the back of the net, because the charm ones found their way on, into the tomb on their own. These are people locked in there by the perfect eye, so it's most likely like that's supposed to be the thing that kind of binds them to that world and kind of it's essentially the cell doors to their prison, I think. So, go we had never seen them before, so well, because we did see those symbols that got uh burned as um the creatures were defeated because I think those symbols are supposed to be, like I said, the locks to their, their prison doors. So I think that's what that's supposed to be, or kind of like either a representation of the cell, or like I said, a lock or a key to the lock to their prison. So that's what the symbols are because the symbol Abby and uh, Jordan have are different symbols. Just like every monster that got defeated left a different symbol behind. So like I said, I think the perfect eye aren't like necessarily bad guys, but like I said, they're in the avatar lane of like, they kind of turn antagonistic because of their very extreme means of trying to create a utopia. It's like, yeah, Abby's like flip floppy. Sure. But she's also helped the charm ones in the past. So she's not, as bad she has some redeemable qualities but it's the thing of like oh you can kind of understand but locking jordan up a normal human that's kind of frowned upon but like i said he's kind of seen as an enemy him being friends with the charm ones i wonder will that change anything when that comes out uh comes up i mean granted maggie like she tries to call jordan but it doesn't go through and it's like she's probably gonna be like oh where is jordan no one's seen him for a while so that's gonna be a little interesting but also it's probably gonna be a thing of I wonder how they're going to feel the moment they find out the Charm Ones have, like, been in cahoots with a demon like Abby. Like, how that's going to sit with them. There's a lot of stuff to kind of be uh, considered about that. But like I said, I think 
this is like them kind of showing their true colors to a certain extent. So I think we're going to see this more and more. Like, that's why I'm wondering, like, any mystical creatures that have been, like, you know, whether it's like demons or not, but anyone that's up to some shenanigans is going to get locked up in that prison. So, like I said, they're willing to lock up a human. Who's to say they're not going to lock up any other, like, non-demon supernatural creatures as well? So we'll see if that ends up being the case or not, because I'm really interested to ultimately see uh, where all of this uh, takes us going forward. I should also mention, too, uh... Obviously, um, Josefina left the, um, the Book of Shadows she was recreating. It's like, yeah, it's still a work in progress, but yeah, which makes it like, aren't we all? So, uh, like I said, some very interesting, uh, developments. Uh, we'll have to wait and see where it all takes us going forward, but, uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, look like to the force, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.